tip of Lookout Mountain. It's a national military park that actually commemorates the battles of the Civil War around the Chattanooga area. It is a beautiful area with some amazing views and there's some really good hikes off Point Park. One, you can get down to Sunset Rock and then you can also get down to historical Craven's House. We're vibing in Chattanooga today at Point Park at the top of Lookout Mountain and we'll see you there. northern tip, there's Point Park, built in 1905 by the Army Corps of Engineers to commemorate the battle above the clouds. Although most of the fighting took place on the mountainside and not in the vicinity of the park, Carter Stevenson, commander of the three brigades that defended the area, had positioned cannons atop Lookout Mountain to aid in its defense and to fire upon the advancing Union Army in Chattanooga. Once the cannons became ineffective, they were withdrawn at the end of that day, November 24th, 1863. Stevenson was encamped in the area of the park, surrounded on three sides by a force ten times the size of his. Upon orders from General Braxton Bragg, commander of the Army of Tennessee, Stevenson withdrew his men southwest to Chickamauga Creek and Missionary Ridge. Grant will be promoted again, this time to take command of all the Union forces. He'll go to Virginia to oversee things there to try his luck against Robert E. Lee. Now, though, he has to fill this vacancy out here. So who does he promote? Joe Hooker, who did the impossible with Captain Lookout Mountain. Ah, he can't stand it. Does he promote George Thomas then? General who become who uh, his troops have broke the center. So who does he promote? Sure. Grant tried to give him the chance to win on the battlefield and get the promotion that way, but when that proved not to be possible, Grant took it into his own hands and made it promoted in the sun. However, it will then be Sherman who will lead these forces out of Chattanooga and just going to keep them up to Atlanta which falls to him in September of 1864, and then he begins his move on to Savannah and the city. The domino really started falling with the Confederacy here, because once that's done, it's just a few months before it's over. So it would definitely go to the next loop there, the river? Well, about the maximum points at that first 90 degree turn of Poey 24 down there, that's about the maximum range. Is that that ramp right here? Yes, sir, where all that is, that makes that real sharp 90 degree turn back to the east. Wow, that's pretty far. Because they actually found shrapnel from these guns down there where they were doing work on them. That's amazing. And you said the next 90 degree turn is where they're doing yeah, the one there in the distance, that's the 90 degree missionary ridge. Because more on the other side of town, more to the northeast side. Is that where that museum is? Close by there, and you can see the rail yard up over that way now, too, but it's kind of in the haze. But it's still got a lot of, uh, you know, railroad, but it's more now about north-south railroads than it is back then, which was east, west, north, and south. That ain't made up there. These were the most advanced you're going to find in a Civil War army. They weren't very many of this size and uh, three and a half miles of cannons all the way down to this ramp here. Uh, our little walkway will take you around to several more overlooks. And you can also check out the New York Peace Park. Inside Point Park are numerous monuments to the men who fought and died. The New York Peace Memorial features a Union and a Confederate soldier shaking hands as a sign of reconciliation.
houses items of interest of the Civil War. Or follow the eastern rim of the mountain. 